All right, who remembers, and I know you guys do, but who remembers in the Christmas story when they double dog dare their friend to put his tongue on the flagpole? <laughs> that scene, the first time I ever tried, I watched it, I couldn't watch it anymore. I was like, ah, it like scarred me to think that that kid's tongue got stuck to that pole. Like, ah. <laughs> we laugh because that movie's funny. But I started doing some research on dares, and a lot of dares don't turn out funny. Um, in, put my glasses on. In 2017, eight-year-old Kiari Pope, she and her other eight-year-old cousin were hanging out, doing what eight-year-olds do. They were watching videos and playing, and they saw this YouTube video that dared them, that was a dare to drink boiling water out of a straw. And so the cousin dared Karai to drink boiling water from a straw, and she did. And then she drank cold water, you know, she drank cold water afterwards, but the damage was done. So she wakes up in the middle of the night screaming, it's burning, it's burning. They take her to the hospital. She ends up having to have a tracheotomy. They removed her vocal cords, so she was rendered mute. But unfortunately, that wasn't the end of the story. It ended up, she had a complication. She died at eight years old from a dare. And so then I read another story of this boy, this is probably 14-ish, in Europe, I don't even understand how this works. They dumped deodorant on his nipples, and he sat there and let it sit on there for however long. And then his friend flicked it and literally flicked his nipples off of his body. At school. He did this at school. Yeah, so then he's like, ouch, but, you know, I'm going to be cool and go to class until his teacher sees the blood running down his shirt. And he's like, I think you need to go to the nurse. He's like, no, no, it's cool, it's fine. Then there's, uh, let's see, 16-year-old Michael Walker was out with his friends, and they dared him to jump into this canal, and two boys jumped in, and one boy swam out. And Micah did not make it. He drowned, jumping in this pit. Um, if you remember, you guys, if, I don't know if all of you have heard of TikTok. There are these, like, videos. Well, I guess there was a TikTok challenge a year or so ago, the eight crate challenge. And you would take eight milk crates and stack them up. And then you'd, try to, you'd film yourself trying to climb. So we think that dare, only kids fall for these stupid dares, but not so. All kinds of, there was a rumor, she didn't actually die. All these rumors of these, like all these videos of these adults, who are smart enough to know better, trying to climb on eight milk crates. That's eight feet, basically, eight or nine feet of milk crates. And then, of course, you know, they fall all these injuries. Um, there's a little, let's see, 10-year-old Nyla Anderson of Pennsylvania. I remember doing this one, actually, when I was in college. You, like, well, she did it where she held her breath until she passed out, um, and she passed away. We did it when I was in college. You'd, like, hyperventilate and go like this, and someone would pick you up, and it would make you, like, pass out. Um, there was a boy from Ludlow who, probably 10 years ago now, he was like a freshman, and he, they were doing this challenge, like try to make yourself pass out, and he basically had a mini stroke, and like, it like caused paralysis in his face, he still has to this day, like he's, you know how Sylvester Stallone has that like, kind of lip that's, he has that still to this day, because he was, you know, his friends dared him to do it, and he's like, yeah, I gotta do it, right, so like, dares, dares can be dangerous, there's this, Ones that, as teachers, drive us crazy now, they're called devious licks. And it's on TikTok, and then there are these challenges that these people on TikTok put out for kids to do. And kids, of course, want to be famous and want to do whatever the cool kids are doing, right? So these devious licks, kids were stealing paper towel dispensers and soap dispensers and knocking sinks off the walls and bathrooms. And they put it on TikTok so they could be famous and, you know, get lots of likes. There was another one, which we had kids do that. We did have kids try to break, try to steal paper towel dispensers and break a sink. Um, there was another one they were daring kids to smack their teachers in the butt or in the face and, like, get it on TikTok. So, like, I know. Like, and, and I would love to say that, like, that's because of social media, but it's not. Like, dare has been around forever. You know, the, as we were, one of our stories was like, what's something people dared you to do? You know, like, so I'm sure we can all think of that time when we were dared to do something that we did, and whether it was a good or bad thing, whether it turned out good or bad, you know, like some of us, the Lord watched over us, we did something really stupid, and the Lord watched over us and kept us safe. 
you know. But dares, dares are, have been going on in all of history. So Jesus, Jesus was even dared by the devil. So we've been talking about Jesus' time in the desert. And the first, we already did the first test, so we're now we're on the second test. And the second test, the devil is daring Jesus, right? So it says, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. It said, if you really are the son of God, then throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you in their hands, so you will not strike your foot against the stone. So in the last challenge, Jesus was... The devil's like, oh, you're hungry. You should feed yourself. And Jesus responded with scripture. So the devil's like, oh, you want to respond with scripture? To can play at that game. I know scripture too. And so the devil's trying to use scripture to get Jesus to, to give in. He's daring Jesus. <clears throat> I, don't have, I can't get away from my microphone. <laughs> so I can clear my throat. He's daring Jesus. If you really are the son of God, prove it. Oh, you say you're the son of God? Show me. And I think it was Dale in our small group. He made a good point. He's like, it was a great dare for the devil because like, if he did it and he died, then the devil's problem is solved. <laughs> and if he doesn't do it, the devil's like, oh, guess you're not son of God. <laughs> it was like, oh, he's, the devil's smart. But Jesus is really smart too. So Jesus, again, this is how Jesus often defended himself. He comes back with scripture. Jesus answered, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Right? So the devil is using um, Psalm 91. It says, the Lord is my refuge, and when you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near you or your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra, and, they, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. So the devil's using scripture. He's using this psalm, which I think is really funny. I think it's really ironic that he uses the psalm that says that you will trample the serpent, which I just think is kind of funny. But, uh, so Jesus comes back with scripture also from the Old Testament, because there was no New Testament then. And he says, fear the Lord your God, serve him only. Take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, <clears throat> the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your God who is among you is jealous, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the earth. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, as you did at Massa. So it's interesting that in this test, this, the enemy is like trying to make Jesus, he's trying to get Jesus to say that Jesus is God. He's trying to get Jesus to say, I am, like, I am, I'm the big stuff. I'm, I'm the big man on campus. Like, I'm the best. He's trying to get Jesus to say, basically, that he is a God. But Jesus doesn't take the bait. Jesus doesn't say, oh, let me show you that I'm God. Jesus says, don't test the Lord. Because the Lord is, like, the Lord is the Lord. If you remember that story when they say, good teacher, he's like, don't call me good. Like, only God is good. Like, Jesus always kind of kept God above him. And the devil was trying to get Jesus to put himself on par with God. The devil was trying to test him, to, and he was trying to dare him. Oh, you really are the son of God? Prove it. You know, I double dog dare you. Jump off this cliff. Right? But Jesus wasn't having it. Because Jesus is, he's just, well, he was Jesus, he's smart. But, but it's interesting to me, this test here, as I was thinking about the last test, I'm like, how, okay, I'm talking about, it's like testing, so what was, what was the test? And then I got thinking about the cross. And so as we come into the Easter season, the Lord helped me see that this is yet another bookend. It's kind of like, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and the cross is kind of the end. But like, it's another part of the test. When Jesus was on the cross, he, he was being, they, they basically said the same thing to him. When Jesus was on the cross, so they just had a terrible trial, which was basically a farce and a bunch of lies. They've beaten him. They spit in his face. They put the crown on him and bashed him in the head. They've taken all of his clothes off him. They've stripped him naked. Okay, we always see the picture of him with like the little loincloth on the cross. Ah, he didn't have a loincloth on the cross. They put God on the cross naked for everyone to see. He's in agony. 
And, and now they're jeering and, and taunting him, saying, oh, they're walking by like, you were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come on, Jesus, save yourself. Come on down from there if you really are the Son of God. Come on, prove it. And the same way the chief priests and the teachers of the law, so all of the heads of the church are hanging out going, ha ha, we got you. If you really are who you say you are, you say you're the Son of God. Come on. It says above your cross that you're the Son of God. Come on, prove it, big, big man. And he says, you saved all those other people, but you can't save yourself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now and we'll believe him. So they're saying to him basically the same things the devil said to him in the second test. Oh, you really? They took him to the highest place. So he's on a hill about looking out over God's city. So God's temple city where God lives. And Jesus was taken to the top of the temple and said, oh, you really think you're, you're saying you're the son of God? Are you? Prove it. Then we'll believe you. And so Jesus, that test in the wilderness was to make sure that Jesus could withstand this moment. Right here. When you're in agony, when you are, I mean, he had to have been physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted after going through what he went through. The Romans were really good at torturing people. Like they had it down to an art form. And here he is exhausted, and he's being mocked, and he's being insulted. And he could have, with one word, called down an angel of armies and wiped them all out. You guys have seen Indiana Jones, right? The Ark of the Covenant, they open the Ark and all the faces melt off. He could have done that. He could have, with one word, called down angels to just smite and strike them all dead. He could have been like, you jerks, let me show you. Mm -hmm. As a kid's like, mm, let me show you. Right? But he didn't because he had to die on the cross. In his weakest moment, he had to show back in the desert that in his weakest moment that he would succumb to the dare. That he would be so assured in himself that he wouldn't give in to the peer pressure and be like, let me show you, let me show you who I am. Right? He had all the power and authority to end his suffering in that moment. To save himself. He could have come off that cross. He had the power to come off that cross. To call the angels. To lift him off the cross and take care of him. But he didn't. And he had to pass that test. To show that he could make it through the cross. And so it's because of what he did. That we are able to have that relationship with the Father. That we're able to have that exchange with God. That comes from the cross. So then. And I always like to close with like. So what does that, what does that mean for me? right? We are dared all the time in our society. Not, not, it's not like the boys in the Christmas story like, I double dog dare you. But we are dared all the time by our society. Our society always is like, prove yourself. Prove that you're really capable. Prove that you're smart. Prove that you're wealthy. Work so hard that you never have time for your family or for God and you wear yourself out. Prove that you're so smart. You know, like, people put that stuff on social, all these lies and stupid stuff on social media, and it's so tempting, you'll be like, oh, let me tell you. You get on there, and you want to tell everybody, like, let me tell you, you're so stupid. <laughs> right? Or, like, someone is, like, whatever, they're, they're insulting you. They're being rude to you. They're being jerks to you. There are people who are just jerks. Right? And it'd be so easy to be like, let me tell you. Like, I see kids, as a teacher, I see kids all the time who are being rude. I'm like, oh, I could put you in your place. <laughs> you think you're so smart. Let me show you how smart I am. You know? Like, it would be so easy to do that sometimes. Or there's someone who's being such a jerk to us that we just like, let me show you. I could be a jerk to you. Or like, people are gossiping. You're like, oh, I know a really good tip. Let me share it. And I'll look so smart. Because I know this inside thing. So we have all these dares in our, built into our culture that we have to withstand because we have to constantly remember who we are and whose we are. So even when we want to put a scathing thing on social media or whatever, our loud neighbor, we want to like be mean to them or we want to like show how rich we are, right? Like our job is to be humble. People who love the Lord. Our job is to forgive, to give grace, acceptance, and love wherever we go. 
Our job is not to put someone down or to show them how smart we are. Our job is to show them how much we love them wherever we go. And that can be really hard sometimes because some people are, they deserve it. Some people deserve to be put in their place. Some people really deserve to be shown what for, to be shut up. But that's not our job. Our job is to love them. Our job is to sacrifice for them at times. Even when someone's being a total jerk to you at work, like I had a guy recently who was just being a jerk at work, and I could have gone in there, or, you know, I could have like told everybody what a jerk he was and told the story about what a jerk he was so everyone would think that he's such a jerk, but I didn't. Instead, I went and said, hey, like, what's going on here? Like, I tried a conflict resolution with him. I think we're good now. It's hard to tell with him. <laughs> but it would be really easy. Like, I started to screenshot what he wrote, and I was going to send it to my friends and be like, oh, my gosh, can you believe what he just said to me? And I screenshot it, and I'm like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and I deleted it instead of sending it. But it would have been so, like, I would have looked better by showing what a jerk he was being. But I chose not to do that. Just like Jesus could have proven to all those people on the cross that he was the son of God by miraculously, he probably could have just lifted himself off the cross and stepped down and be like, all right, guys, listen. But he didn't. Because our job is to love and to sacrifice and to give acceptance and grace to everyone we meet wherever we go. And all of God's people said, amen. All right.